Have you ever wondered how some businesses seem to be able to reinvent themselves time and time again? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk about how AJ and Smart reinvented themselves twice, moving from a struggling agency to a global leader and enabling people like you to completely change the way they work. <laughs> Change is the only certainty that we really have. But we all know that because it's been brought so vividly into every part of our lives in the last few years. But just knowing that change is inevitable doesn't mean we're particularly well prepared to deal with it. And it certainly doesn't mean we're able to drive the change ourselves. And this is where we need to start to think and behave like innovators. Product and service innovations, of course, essential, but business model innovation can enable you to react better to change, protect yourselves against potential disruption, and deliver a more lasting competitive advantage. Let's start off with what is business model innovation? Simply put, it's the process of creating and implementing change to both an organization's value proposition to customers and its underlying operating model that can enable you to capture, create, and deliver increased value. Or put another way, drive growth, increase profits, and stay competitive. Our business model innovation refers to the process of creating and implementing new ways of working, new ways of doing business. This can include new ways of creating value for customers, new ways of generating revenue, and new ways of organizing and delivering your products and services. And there's one company that I know very well that has transformed their whole business model, not just once, but twice in the last six years, and that's AJ and Smart. Now for those of you that aren't familiar with who AJ and Smart are, they're a Berlin-based design studio, best known for delivering design sprints to corporate clients, as well as teaching people how to run design sprints themselves. But things haven't always been like this for AJ and Smart. I'm gonna tell you this story of AJ and Smart's two business model innovations that have catapulted them to where they are right now using the business model canvas by Strategizer. So in order to get an accurate picture of the steps that AJ and Smart actually took, I managed to have a chat on the phone with the founder and CEO, Jonathan Courtney. Now, as an aside, that call was full to the brim of value. I'd love to share all the insights from that conversation, but that's gonna to have to be saved for another time. So let's first take a look at how AJ and Smart's business model used to look. So as you can see, I've got a business model canvas by Strategizer inside a Miro board, which is my tool of preference for delivering remote workshops, as well as pretty much everything. In fact, I probably live most of my life inside a Miro board these days. It's that good at all. Now, firstly, let's have a look at the proposition, the value proposition for AJ and Smart. So essentially, AJ and Smart were a full stack design and development agency doing pretty much the same thing as you can imagine most design agencies do. And the relationships that they have with their customers, it's all based around a brief. You get the idea here, nothing special, nothing unique about this agency. They would find people that needed a website building or a design doing, they would base it around a brief and the scope of that would depend basically on the budget. I remember in the call I had with uh, Jonathan Courtney, he would talk about putting a price out for a, a piece of work. And if it's too much, they'd then just arbitrarily change some of the numbers so that they're reducing the amount of scope and the amount of days that they might be working on it. That's really what the business model was based entirely on. A company needing some work doing around the UX or design or development world, they would scope out how many days that would take and then depending on the budget, get the work or not get the work. Now, as you can imagine, the channels to find those organizations, those businesses that need some of that work would have been things like word of mouth, would have been testimonials, would have been their website that they had basically competing in a very saturated pond with a lot of other agencies. And of course, what that means is from their revenues perspective, they got work for the amount of days that they did, they earned more money by selling more days, by making the scope look bigger. And it was always a little bit of a guesswork to try to figure out 
what price you should be selling things for, the fairly standard day rates, very difficult to grow and scale from that position. Now, I'm not going to focus too much on the other side of the business model, essentially how they operate, because you can kind of imagine they've got UX designers, they've got developers, they've probably got some kind of sales team and maybe a small kind of marketing function as well to try to get that new business. Nothing groundbreaking. What I'm going to do, though, is talk about that when we go on to the next stage, which is their first business model innovation that transformed them from a homogenous agency like everybody else into something really quite unique. So before we go into the big business model innovation that happened, one of the things I wanted to talk about was a catalyst for why this change happened. And when I had the conversation with Jonathan Courtney, he said that he was inspired after reading a book called Built to Sell, which is a story really about how you can take a business that isn't really sellable, as in it's not really worth anything if someone wanted to buy it, and turn it into a business that could be sold. So he'd read this book and he was exploring what kind of things he might be able to do to his business to make it more sellable and more attractive to potential businesses buyers and essentially make sure that that business is sustainable without him, which is one of those core messages of that book. And then along came the book Sprint by Jake Knapp. And this was his moment where everything kind of changed. Now, this book really was the vehicle that pulled everything together and enabled him to realise that dream of being a company that could exist without him and could actually be sold if he ever wanted it to. Now, in the book Invincible Company by Alex Osterwalder, he talks about business model shifts. Now, one of the shifts that Jonathan Courtney did with AJ and Smart was a value proposition shift. And they moved from a service company, which is essentially a full stack design and development agency, and they moved their proposition to solving your challenges in just one week. Now, in order to do this, they also changed their customer segments. Instead of focusing on local business and maybe smaller firms, they were able to take this approach and this this step-by-step -step methodology and recipe for solving different business problems and take it to big corporates. Something that wasn't really being done with people that were using the design sprint because the design sprint was more focused on startups. Now, Jonathan used another tool, something that Russell Brunson calls the Dream 100, identifying key partners that can enable you to access a bigger, wider audience and maybe be a catalyst for growth. Now, what Jonathan Courtney did was he actually partnered up. He flew over to meet Jake Knapp, the author of Sprint, the book, and they actually formed a partnership that Jake Knapp just couldn't refuse. Now, what this partnership really meant for AJ and Smart was that they became a trusted partner for delivery of design sprints and they really started to own the words design sprint across all media platforms and what that partnership really looked like was around the channels and this is where it get really exciting for AJ and Smart they started to create an enormous body of content they had YouTube channels podcasts podcasts with Jake Knapp so if anybody was looking for information about how to run design sprints, what they would generally find is the content of Jonathan Courtney either talking to Jake Knapp or imparting some kind of amazing value about what design sprints really are all about. And what those things really meant was that AJ and Smart could start to move away from day rate work and selling more days in order to make more money. And they could sell a single product. With every sales proposal that they wrote, they increased the price a bit more until it got to the point where sales started to drop. So as we zoom out of our business model canvas, you can see how it all starts to work together. Firstly, they set out to dominate the design sprint world. They did this by connecting with Jake Knapp, who wrote the design sprint book. That partnership meant that they were able to create content, YouTube videos, podcasts, and a whole load of other things that enabled them to get kudos and credentials to be the trusted partner for delivery of design sprints, particularly focused on big corporates that enabled them to sell and to deliver their value proposition of solving your challenges in just one week by running a design sprint. Now, the delivery teams, just delivery teams of three people, a designer, a facilitator and a user researcher, meant that they were able to do this at scale. That, of course, led to selling a single product and rapidly increasing the price of that product so they could really make some good profits. So as I said at the beginning of this video, AJ and Smart actually had two 
business model shifts that enabled them to capitalize on an enormous opportunity. So let's have a look at that second business model innovation now. So after running hundreds of design sprints, there was clearly enormous demand for them running design sprints, but they also noticed that people wanted to learn how to run design sprints themselves. So they ran some experiments to figure out if there was a new value proposition that could capitalize on this demand that people had to run their own design sprints, starting off with their value proposition. Essentially, learn how to run a design sprint. Now, of course, what they already knew is that they had these great channels because they were creating so much content and that content was really proving that the new customer segment might be an interesting opportunity to go after individuals that were wanting to run those design sprints. Now, what they already had in their back pocket as a result of the content that they were creating were these enormous super fans. They were giving away so much valuable content through YouTube and blogs that their subscribers were skyrocketing on YouTube. Now, when you have an enormous fan base like that, it's actually pretty easy to mobilize that and turn them into paying customers. And that's exactly what they did first. So for these super fans, what they decided to do was open up a product ladder. They started to gather email addresses, giving away free content, giving away blogs in order to get email addresses. And with those email addresses, they essentially created a product ladder. Now, the way that a product ladder works is that you give away for free or very cheaply your first products, your first bits of content. So they gave away things like free eBooks, webinars, free stuff for people to dip their toe in the water before making a bigger purchase decision. Then with this product ladder that offer the next product, which is fairly expensive, but not hugely expensive and get people to buy that first. The higher up the ladder you go, the more expensive the products become. But the psychology here for the end user or the customer is that they've gone this far, so they might as well go for the next one as well. Now these product ladders eventually enabled them to start to sell courses. The Design Sprint Masterclass was the first proper course that AJ and Start started to sell. It was priced somewhere around the thousand euros, thousand dollar kind of mark. The last time I was able to get any figures, they had sold over seven or eight thousand of these courses. So straight away, you can see that this experiment has generated multi-million dollars in revenue. But of course, with AJ and Smart, it doesn't stop there. <laughs> Once they had started to exhaust that initial user base that they built up through their content, they started to take it even bigger. So starting with the same customer segment that we had previously, individuals wanting to run a design sprint, they'd already exhausted their subscribers and email list, so they had to find new people. So they started to create a B2C sales and marketing funnel. So their key resources were very much focused on marketing and selling courses for people that were looking to start to run their own design sprints. Now, of course, they had this product ladder already in existence, ways to upsell people and a step-by-step -step approach going from a free product to something that's quite expensive. But they didn't have the mechanism at that point in order to go and get those people. So what, of course, they did was started to generate some ads. Now, these ads were generally in Facebook and Instagram, really trying to focus on individuals that showed some kind of interest in design, design thinking, in creating new products and learning about design sprints. And they were able to very narrowly target those people in order to get them into the top of the funnel and then work their way through the product ladder. Starting off with how to run design sprints, of course, they were able to sell courses, but because of the product ladder again, their price increased with the deeper that people got into the AJ and Smart world. What this then did was started to increase their social community. They started to get even more super fans that ultimately went back into this ladder and started to go for more expensive products, selling products from ranging from a thousand pounds per seat up to 3000. They even created a super exclusive top end product for around 25,000 euros. Let's go over that one more time to really get a grasp of what AJ and Smart did to completely transform their business. Having run hundreds of design sprints, they knew that there was a demand for people wanting to learn how to run design sprints themselves. So their customer segment went from a B2B proposition to a B2C proposition. They started off looking at their current 
audience list on YouTube and through email. But when that kind of saturated, they started to do some B2C selling, creating a funnel-based marketing and sales approach. They had a product ladder that gave away free content, eBooks, webinars, in order to get people going, in order to build the trust. Now, these initial products were still very high value. They just weren't as big as the full course. And it whetted the appetite for so many people that were able to move through that product ladder in order to increase the value that they were able to capture from each customer. This old course is about how to run design sprints, generating enormous revenues. Now those people went on to deliver design sprints themselves and generated massive income, which gave them an enormous social community of people that really trusted them. They then became super fans themselves. Going back into the product ladder, they were able to increase the price the higher up the ladder those individuals started to go. But of course, don't forget that both of these business models were operating at the same time, just with different teams. And now they did actually link together at times as well. Because of course, these super fans often were working with these big organizations themselves. Some of them were actually feeding into the B2B leads for the other side of the company. So actually, these two business models, whilst at first they look like they don't link together, it's actually a B2C to B business model, which means that both sides of the business can actually thrive. Now, I know that that's a lot to take in, but hopefully you're starting to see now that A, if you're a, an agency or consultancy that might be looking to productize your offer, you can do that in the kinds of ways that AJ and Smart have done it, but also that the power of the business model canvas is enormous. It's not just about plotting what your current business model is, but actually what things could you do that could unlock enormous growth potential, maybe looking to change your value proposition, your customer segments, the way that you deliver your products, even changing your revenue models as well. And all of that can be modeled using the business model canvas. You can see what I think it's one of the most versatile tools for any business thinking about strategy and innovation. Thank you so much for watching. This has been uh, an amazing journey to really unpick what AJ and Smart have done in order to completely transform themselves. And hopefully that's given you some food for thought about what you might be able to do with your businesses, whether you're starting a brand new project or you're an existing organization that's looking to innovate around their business model. This might just give you some ideas about how you might be able to do that. Of course, as always, like, and subscribe and share this video with just one person if you feel like somebody else might get some value from it. Final thing to say is a massive thanks to Jonathan Courtney. If you're interested to know more about Jonathan Courtney, go over to his Substack page, howtobusiness.substack.com and you'll find out loads of counterintuitive advice about running a small business by someone who's been in it for 12 years. Again, thanks so much, Jonathan, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.